Hello everyone, today we're working on a 2015 Toyota Venza. We're going to be doing a transmission filter service and then after we do that we'll be doing a flush. And there's three parts items you'll need from Toyota. The first one is going to be your strainer or filter. And we've got the part number A here for it. Next item is going to be the transmission filter or pan gasket I should say. And there's a part number for that. And there's also an O-ring that goes on the neck of the filter. And there's the part number for that one. Now this uh, Venza is a, a 2015 and it's got the four-cylinder engine in it. So we're going to be doing the flush with the uh, Amsoil Synthetic Transmission Fluid. Here's a spec sheet on the Amsoil Synthetic ATF, the signature series. And uh, first thing I want to show you here is there's two different ones here listed on this page. One is this uh, red one is the older formulation, uh, multi-vehicle synthetic ATF. And uh, then the blue bag here, this one right here, is uh, it's a low viscosity, fuel efficient synthetic ATF. And that's what most of your newer transmissions are going to call for. Um, the thing about this uh, chemical engineering synthetic is it uh, reduces the operating temperature of your transmission by 20 to 50 degrees over petroleum-based fluids. And uh, the, the life of the fluid is significantly longer as well. As you uh, drop that temperature out of that transmission, all the soft parts inside last a whole lot longer. All the seals, uh, all the piston seal rings. Um, as you drop the heat by 20 to 50 degrees, the life of those soft components goes up significantly and that extends your transmission life. And as an example, we have a uh, uh, taxi fleet, severe service taxi fleet field, uh, field trial. This was in Las Vegas. Um, what they did is they run the Amsoil for 180,000 miles in the transmission and uh, they selected the transmission to, to tear apart and see how everything looked. And what you're, sh you're seeing here is the synthetic Amsoil, um, even after 180,000 miles, contained 83% of its original oxidation inhibitors. And uh, you can see the, the valve body here looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, the clutches, again, they're clean, uh, very little signs of wear on them. Uh, very good condition. Um, this is the kind of protection in the desert heat of Las Vegas that the Amsoil provides. So one of the best ways to extend the life of your transmission is through the use of that Amsoil Signature Series ATF. As we go down to this next sheet here, it gives you all the specifications, all the uh, ASTM specifications here on the two, two products. The ATF is the older formulation. The ATL is the low viscosity right here. So as we go to the specifications, here's the applications for the older ATF. And this is just part of them. The, other, the rest of it's at the top of the other page. I'll show you that here. Right here is the remainder of the specs for that older ATF. And then right here is the specifications for the low viscosity ATF for most of the newer transmissions. So this gives you uh, all the specifications for that fluid. And uh, it shows you significantly how much better that performs than the regular fluids out there. Uh, if you want to extend the life of your automatic transmission, this uh, chemical engineered synthetic signature series AMSOIL is the best way to do it. Here's the home page of my fluidcapacity.com website. So when you get here, you can go to Auto and Light Truck Fluid Lookup Guide. And that'll bring up this page here. We put in the year of the vehicle, 2015. <clears throat> Scroll down to Toyota. And we'll go to the Venza. And this one has a four cylinder engine. And over here on the side, it'll give you a printable. Right here's a print button for it. Printable uh, list of all the fluids Amsoil recommends. Um, the fluid we'll be looking at or using for this is for the uh, uh, U760 series transmission. It's a signature series fuel efficient uh, automatic training fluid, ATL. And down here it gives you, well, it's got the differentials here. It's what it holds in those or what uh, fluid it recommends. And then down here it gives you the filters air filter, oil filters, uh, cabin air filters, and as you go down further we've got the engine oil capacity, cooling system capacity, and the total fill on the transmission looks to be just under seven quarts. So this gives you all that information, uh, easily to, easy to find, and uh, you can print it off for each vehicle. Um, when we start this transmission flush, the first thing you want to do is have the vehicle uh, elevated and, and level. Got to do everything with the vehicle level. 
Uh, whatever you do to the front end, you got to do the back end. If you're using jack stands at home, you know, do the same level on both both ends. Uh, we have to have the temperature at about 120 degrees, and you can use a scan tool to do that, but most of you aren't going to have the scan tool. Um, so what I do is get the transmission up to temp. You can do that by taking it out and driving it. And the temperature you want is about 120 degrees, right in that range within a few degrees. So you can buy a, a, a these temp guns are ra relatively inexpensive. You can get them for 30, 40 bucks, and they're fairly accurate. Um, what I'm going to do is, is I've got a, a thermal imaging camera, and I'll just shoot the bottom of that transmission pan and uh, get it to that 120 degrees when we go to check the fluid level. So that kind of gives you some idea of the, I the items you'll need for this transmission flush. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with that and be back with you. All right, in order to get at the bolts on the front of that transmission pan, there's a plastic cover here. It starts here right ahead of the driver's wheel. It goes about halfway across and it kind of there's a split right here. So this whole section here is going to come out. And there's 10 millimeter head bolts. Buzz them out first. Okay, and then what they have is these little plastic keepers. And what happens is they get real brittle over time and they're hard to get out and there's, there's special tools I've got a couple of them here and I was working on this one earlier and when I went to, the, to get under it to pull it out it just wanted to snap it and I ended up going to this one and I think I can still get this one out there it is right there but there's like a right there is what it is so as you push it in then it doesn't allow those uh, those fingers there to to come in to allow it to fall out. So when you push it out, it releases them. So they can squeeze in and you can pull it out. But there's uh, there's one right here, one right here, and there's one right here. And uh, like I said, they're kind of a bear. You can kind of work them loose with a, a flat straight edge screwdriver just to get them out, just enough to get your tool underneath. This is a blue point tool. I don't know what the number is there. It is. It's a YA335. And with that, you should be able to get in there and, and there it comes, just released. And then you can pull it right out. So that's what it takes to get this out of the way. So we're going to pull this down and that'll show you what all we have to be able to get at that pan. So we'll get that done and we'll be back with you. Okay, on the side of the transmission, coming in here by the front drive tire, front driver's side tire, uh, we've got a cover right here that has to be removed to get at the fill plug. The fill plug is about right in this general area right behind it. So there's two 10 millimeter head bolts that we're going to take out. Okay, and once we take that out, then we can rotate this down and out of the way. Because there's a plastic keeper in here further in, and that doesn't have to be removed. But this here is a 24 millimeter or 15 sixteenths, they're both same size. And that's where we fill the transmission at. So we'll show you the fill procedure when we get to that point. Okay, we're going to start draining this oil out, and this is a 6 millimeter hex on here. We'll break that loose. And this vehicle has 102,000 miles on it. Uh, I'm not sure if the tranny's ever been done. So we'll see what this fluid here looks like. And there we go. Kind of doubt that it's been changed. It's getting a little dark. You can kind of see it there. It's still got a little bit of red tinge to it. Don't look terrible. So we take this plug out and we're going to let this drain. It'll take a little bit to drain. And then there's a plastic tube that is inside of that port there where it's draining out at. And we have to remove that to finish draining out the transmission. So we're going to let this drain and I'll show you that, uh, that tube and how to take that out. Okay, it's dripped out as far as it's going to with that drip tube still in place. So we're going to take that out and it's a six millimeter, same as the drain plug. And it should just be in there finger tight. So just unscrew it. And that'll allow the rest of that pan to drain down. And right there it is, okay? So that is what's uh, giving you your fluid level up inside the pan. 
So when we have 120 degrees, the fluid will start dribbling out of here. That's the level you want at 120 degrees. So instead of a dipstick, this is what they have. So we'll set that aside and that goes back in when we get all done. And I'll show you up in the pan. I'll reinstall it once we get that pan out and show you what it looks like. Okay, this is pretty well drained out. And to keep me from getting this all over me while I'm taking the bolts out, I'm going to put that drain plug back in and just put it in finger tight. And the head of the bolts on the pan are 10 millimeter. And you can take all of them out except this one right here. And this one right here, the uh, trans or the, the cradle, the engine cradle, engine transaxle cradle is kind of in the way. And I have a special socket that I've made. I'll show you that. So I'm going to remove all the sockets except, or all the, the uh, uh, bolts except for that one. And then I'm going to show you the special socket I have set up for that. And uh, then we'll go from there. Okay, there's one bolt right here. It's got some Loctite, blue Loctite on. And it's the one right here, right here at the end of my finger. I don't know if we can see it or not. When you go back together, you might want to put some blue Loctite on that one. Um, I don't know how much transmission fluid is going to get in the way when we take this pan off. The problem with the transmission fluid is it doesn't allow for the Loctite to work like it should. And there may be very well be enough on that bolt to seal it back up. But that's just something to make note of right there on that particular bolt where my finger is at. You can see that blue Loctite. Make that two of them. One right next to it as well. Okay. <clears throat> Now the socket, what I did is I took a, just a regular 10 millimeter socket, just a kind of a junk, cheap Japan or Chinese made one, and I ground off as much of it as I could to still allow for the head of the bolt to get in there. And then at the back side of the socket here, I, I took a, a belt sander and I ground off kind of the edge of that socket, and that allowed me to get in there far enough to get that loose. Otherwise, with just a regular socket, it's a shallow socket, it's not a deep well. Now I've got a wobble drive extension on that. Wobble drive allows for that socket to wobble around on the extension. And without that, you really are going to have a hard time getting that out of there. So, but that will get you on there and be able to get you that bolt out. And also when you go back in again. And you can see right here, I, I knocked that corner off of the socket so that we could clear a little bit better on that, uh, on that cradle. Gives you the room to get it out. And there it is. And here's the last one. Okay, I got the green pan in place here. And I'll take that down. And there we go. Okay. The next thing is taking down the uh, the filter and the head of the bolts on those is that same 10 millimeter. And got one right here. And that bolt is longer than your pan bolts. Make sure you set it aside. And then we have the second one it is right here. Okay. And also be ready because when this comes down, there's usually a shower of oil coming right behind it. There we go. Okay, so when you get this filter down, on the neck of this filter, there's an O-ring. And you can see it's not there. It's up here in the body. So make sure you get that O-ring out. Otherwise, it's going to get sucked up into your, uh, into your transmission. You don't want that to happen. Okay, so we've got that all down. Now, the next thing we're going to do is clean up that pan and the magnets, and uh, we'll be back with you. Okay, we got the pan out and pretty well drained out, and there's four magnets, one, two, three, four, and what they have on them, again, we got 102,000 miles on them. What you're seeing on there is basically the, the normal wear from the break-in, and the magnets do a pretty good job of collecting all that. What the magnets can't collect is the, the clutch wear material because it's not really going to stick to a magnet. 
and uh, you can kind of see some of that on the back side here right down in there that gray stuff down inside that filter because the filter sits upright like this and that little pocket catches that stuff you can see some of that in there that gray stuff is kind of the some of the wear clutch material over 100,000 miles it's nothing nothing excessive but just normal and there's a little pocket right here there's some right there as well there might be some metal in there too but uh, we're going to take these magnets out and I basically just put them in a rag and I start wiping off that wear metal and get as much of it soaked off as I can because it's kind of oily too when you're done you got most of it and then you can spray it with uh, I use uh, starting fluid it's ether if you're going to use that make sure there's no sparks around you're going to be on fire and that'll help cut the oil film and then I blow it dry That'll get a remainder of that metal off of there, so it's just about like new when, you, when you're when you done. Okay, and then we can set that aside and we'll do the other three. I'm going to clean that all up, and then uh, I'm going to show you that uh, tube for checking the fluid level when we get all done. Okay, I've got the magnets cleaned up. We're going to put those back in where they go, all four of them. And right here is our... Uh, check port and drain. We're going to take that plug out. This is that tube I was telling you about that I removed to get the rest of the fluid out. So we're going to take that and put that in right now. And that just goes in basically finger tight. Take it up until it bottoms out. You don't put a wrench on it because it's plastic. You'll strip those threads. And then there's a, right here it's rolled at the top so you can only go in so far. Okay. So what that does, you can see where the level that is. So when we uh, go to check the transmission fluid, we're going to be at 120 degrees. And the reason we do 120 degrees and not cold is because as the fluid heats up, it expands. Okay. So at 120 degrees, it's, you know, driving down the road, you may see 150, 160, you know, right in that range if it's really hot out. But your fluid should stay fairly cool, 120, 160 right in that range. So we want to check that about 120. Okay. So we're going to fill this up and we're gonna fill it up until the fluid just runs out of here with the engine off. Then we're gonna start it up and the fluid level will drop because the transmission is sucking out of the pan up to the pump. So we're gonna add more with the engine running until it just runs out of here. Once we do that, we're, we're gonna have it uh, warm up to 120 degrees and at 120 degrees, when I take this plug back out of the bottom again, it should just be dribbling out of there over, that, over the edge of this lip right here. So that kind of explains how that works and, and uh, you know, the, the procedure for checking that fluid. So we've got the, uh, the new filter here and I've got the new O-ring right here on the lip. When I get under there, there'll be some drips of oil. I'll probably put a little bit of, of that tranny fluid on there so it slips up in there easy. And we've got a brand new pan gasket here as well. So we're going to get started uh, putting all this back on and uh, we'll be back with you. Okay, we're ready to put this transmission filter in. I'm going to grab just a drop or two of oil here and put on that o-ring just to help lubricate it so it goes and snaps in smooth and let's slip it on in there it is we'll put our two bolts in and those get 96 inch pounds of torque so we'll put those in and those are the longer bolts are kind of a silver color they're different than the pan bolts so we'll torque this to 96 inch pounds, and then the next thing we'll do is put up the pan. Okay, we got this uh, this filter in place, and we're getting ready to put the pan back on. And the two holes I was pointing to, you can see there's a little bit of blue Loctite in them. And here's the trouble. Uh, this, this transmission fluid, it's dripping all the while you take this off. In the factory, everything's nice and dry. What happens is that uh, that fluid gets up into them holes. And I'm going to go ahead and put some Loctite on them, but with that fluid, that tranny fluid always dripping down there, uh, that stops it from, from setting up and adhering like it needs to. So uh, you can, I'm going to use the bolts with the blue Loctite on in that same spot. And here you can see, you can see the blue Loctite. Okay, They put it on there for a reason. It's obviously to help seal it up for, I'm not exactly sure what the, the passage is, but uh, 
again, uh, put the same bolts back into the same spot there and put a little Loctite on. I'm going to get it as dry as I can, but you can see it keeps dripping and dripping out of that tranny. And you just can't stop it. So just a heads up on that. Okay, what I'm going to do where these two screws are at that have the blue Loctite, these two, I'm going to snug up the bolts around them. And what that'll do is that'll allow for me to keep that dry. There won't be any tranny fluid coming into them. I'm going to take a little bit of ether and I'm going to spray up in the hole. And that will get rid of any, uh, that'll get rid of any oil film. And then I can load out. And I've put some Loctite on these bolts. So now the Loctite will not be uh, made ineffective by the transmission fluid. Because it's a nice clean dry hole. And I'll go through and torque these. All these bolts here get torqued. They're 10 millimeter head and they get torqued to 69 inch pounds. So we're going to go ahead and, and torque all these down and uh, then we'll be back with you. Okay, we're going to go ahead and torque. Remember that last bolt there, you have to use that adapter there to get in on it and get that torque down to where it needs to be. And right there it is. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is remove this plug right here and then I'm going to show this procedure for filling the transmission up. Okay, we got that plug out, and that plug was a 15 16 or a 24 millimeter. And uh, we took out about a gallon of fluid, and I'm going to put in probably close to two gallon, gallon and a half to two gallon for the flush, because we're going to be flushing out the torque converter and the cooler. And uh, yes, I'm overflowing it. No, it's not a problem, because we're pumping it right back out again. So we're going to finish uh, by filling this up. I got the, uh, the plug in the bottom of the pan in, so it can't drain out. And uh, once I get to my, to what I want in there for fluid, then uh, we'll start doing the flush. Okay, we're getting ready to do this flush, and the fluid comes out of this line right here, from the tranny, to the cooler. And then it goes through the cooler and comes out this line back to the tranny. So we want to flush out that cooler as well. So we're going to take this line off right here. It's got a squeeze clamp on it, a spring clamp. And when you take that off, you want to have a drain pan. And you want to give it a twist to try to break it loose because it's been on there a while. There it is. Okay. And then you have a, a 3 8 ID hose. And we'll put that on right there. Okay. So. I put in uh, about, let's see, we took out a gallon, and I put in about, uh, I got seven quarts in, and it started running out of that fill tube, and I did overfill it, yes, but again, we're going to be flushing it out through the cooler. We're not driving it down the road, causing any problems there, so um, I would put in uh, six quarts after you've drained it out and got everything back together, and then we can start to flush, and I'm going to go till I get a nice color change in the... Uh, and the transmission cooler line coming out so we'll do that next okay we're getting ready to do this transmission flush we're going to start it up and we're going to run through and put it into drive and into reverse for about three seconds while we do this and then back to park again and i'm going to go until i see a nice color change coming out of the hose go ahead and start it up Starting to come around good. There we go. I'm liking that. Yeah, go ahead and shut it off. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, we took our hose off. We got our flush done. We're going to put this uh, transmission cooler line back on. Put that spring clamp in place again. Okay, and that's it for that. And next thing we're going to do is uh, check the transmission fluid level and do a final check on it. So that's the next step. Okay, we got the flush all done, the cooler line's hooked up, and we're going to take out this, uh, this plug here again and see how much fluid we have. See if we have enough to start it. 
And yes, we do. So go ahead and start it up. Okay, we're going to add some fluid so it comes out of there. Okay, it's just about there. It's starting to dribble out a couple little specks. There it is. Okay, so what we're going to do now, put that plug in, and we're going to let the engine run and get it up to 120 degrees. When we get it to 120 degrees, then we're going to take that plug out again. And at 120, I want uh, the fluid just dribbling out. So right now it's cold. It's probably about 90 degrees. I can keep my hand on it. So again, we'll hit it at about 120 and we'll take this plug out. So we'll be back with it. Okay, we've warmed this up. I had it up to about 130. And kind of here in the center of the pan, we're at about 119, 120. We're in, we're in a pretty close range where we need to be. You got some wiggle room, you know, we don't have to be exact, but we're we're in that 120 range, you know, as you go towards the back, it's a little cooler, but um, so we're gonna go ahead and start it up. Go ahead and run it through the gears, three seconds in each one. Okay, we're back in park, so we're gonna take this plug out here and see where we're at. What I want to see is it start to dribble or slow down the flow there. That'll tell me we're right at the top of that tube. Okay, right there is what I want. Okay, so from here we're going to we're going to torque the uh, drain plug here, and we got to torque that uh, fill plug. I'm going to get the specs for those. Okay, this drain plug gets uh, 15 foot pounds of torque. Okay, now the fill plug on the side of the transmission with that 15 16 head on it, that gets 29 foot-pounds, okay. Now, we're pretty well done with this uh, flush, and I used right at 8 quarts, the total capacity of this transmission I think was 6.9, so right at 7. So you're going to want right in that 8 quart range to do this uh, transmission flush like we did here. So that gives you some idea, and uh, we'll get everything all buttoned up and where it needs to be, so... Thanks for watching my video. Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel at youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Donswell. I'd like to introduce you to Amswell Synthetic Lubricants. We have the most complete line of synthetic lubricants on the market that offer you greatly reduced wear, extended drain intervals, longer equipment life. You can check that out at my website, donswell.com. I also have a website for looking up fluid capacities. It's fluidcapacity.com. You can go there and print off the capacity of your engine oil, cooling system, transmission, transfer case differentials. Be sure to like us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Don Synthetic Lubes. Thank you and have a great day.